Hi folks, HR Funk here. Back in front of the camera with my Tizosh 1911 Raider pistol. And this is a pistol that I got back in 2023 and I shot it extensively last year. In fact, I have over a thousand rounds through this pistol. And you might recall several weeks ago, I posted a short video with this pistol and announced that Tizosh had a recall on several of their 1911 models. Among them was the Raider and there were five other models. I'll flash up on the screen right now what they were. Along with the Raider was the 1911 Duty Night Stalker, both the 45 version and the 10 millimeter version. Also the Republic of Texas 45, the Duty Enhanced 45, and the Match Stainless Steel 45. So if you have any of those pistols, go to the Tizosh website. Down at the bottom there is a banner. You can click on that and it has instructions on how to go about sending your handgun back for the recall. And I've got to tell you, I hate shipping my firearms anywhere. I've done it many, many times for repairs or warranty work or recalls or what have you, and it never gets any easier or any more fun. I always worry that my firearms are going to disappear somewhere in shipment or that they're going to be sent to the wrong location or whatever. I just hate doing it. So I procrastinated when it came to sending my Raider back for this repair for quite a while. Finally, I decided that I needed to do the responsible thing and send it back for the recall because if anyone other than I ever was shooting this and had a problem, I didn't want to be responsible for any injury or damage because I didn't get this taken care of. I had another concern with the Raider as well, and that was since I didn't know specifically what parts were going to be involved in the recall repair, the only thing I knew was that on the Tizosh website and in the announcement that they sent out, they stated that there was a potential for the pistol when a magazine was loaded and the slide was cycled to charge the chamber, the hammer could follow the slide forward and discharge the pistol. So I was a little concerned about what kind of trigger was going to end up in my Raider when it came back. Now the trigger in this pistol was never phenomenal. It was okay. It was serviceable. I tested it and the average for 10 pulls was just over four and three quarter pounds. It was four pounds, 13.7 ounces, as I recall. So it was not an extremely light trigger to begin with, and I was really concerned that I was going to get it back with something like a six and a half or seven pound trigger or whatever, which was another reason I was somewhat hesitant to send it back. But as I said, I finally decided that I really needed to get this taken care of. I have not been shooting it recently and part of it has been because of this concern. So about two weeks ago, I packaged up my Raider. Now the process for sending it back is a little bit more involved than I've had with some other firearms companies over the years. You have to contact Tizosh and you can contact them via the website. They will email a form that you have to fill out. And this form is basic information, name, address, the model of the pistol, the serial number of the pistol, and all of that. And when you get the form, it has an RMA number on it. Then you have to email that form along with your proof of purchase for your firearm with your FFL information and also a copy of your driver's license back to Tizosh. And they use the driver's license to verify your address. Once they get that, Another day or so goes by and you receive a UPS shipping label that also comes in the form of an email. So here's the box that I used to ship my pistol back to Tizosh USA. And it didn't say to do this in the instructions, but I've gotten used to doing this over the years. I actually put the RMA number in two different locations on the box. So whoever received this is going to know right away this is a firearm coming back for some sort of warranty work. It's got the RMA number. They can check that through their system, see who it belongs to, what needs to be done, and all that. So again, there was nothing that said to do that, but that's something I've just gotten in the habit of doing over time. So another thing that I wasn't sure about was just exactly how long I was going to have to wait in order for this repair to be conducted and for me to get my handgun back. As it turns out, I was very pleasantly surprised. It took just over a week. I shipped this on a Tuesday and it was back the following Friday. And the only glitch in the system was 
my address on my driver's license does not correspond to my actual residential address. So Tizosh was not able to ship my firearm back to me at my home. And I got a hold of them regarding that. They actually sent me an email talking about not being able to do that. So I simply had it shipped to House of Pain Armament. They received it for me and I went over there and picked it up the following day after they received it. So again, just over a week to turn this handgun around. And when I got it back, I pulled it out of the box. And the first thing I did was check that trigger. And I thought, you know what? That actually feels better than it did. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, is it just my, my imagination? Am I just thinking that, or does it actually feel better? Well, no. When I got it back here, I checked it again with my trigger pull gauge, and it turns out the trigger is almost exactly one pound lighter than it was before I shipped it. As I said, it was four pounds, 13.7 ounces, right before I shipped it. And when I got it back, I tried another 10 pulls, and the average was three pounds, 13.6 ounces. So just over a pound lighter. And it's now below a four pound pull. The brake is very, very good. So I was happy about that. And I'm going to give you a close up look at the pistol. The only thing that I can see on here that was changed is the trigger. And I know that because the trigger before I shipped the pistol back, had some wear marks from being cycled a large number of times, a great number of times. And this trigger no longer has any marks on it whatsoever. And I'll show you some close up pictures of the trigger before and after too, so you can see those wear marks and you can see that they're not present on the trigger that came back. Now in the box, the only thing that accompanied the pistol from Tizosh that told me anything about what they did was the RMA form that I shipped along with the pistol when I sent it back in. Along with emailing that form to them, when you ship the pistol back, that form has to go inside the box and it accompanies the pistol back. And on that form, the only thing it says is handwritten here on the side, trigger upgraded. And it really looks like that's the only thing that was changed is the trigger. Again, all the other parts that I'm able to see have the same amount of wear that they had before I shipped the pistol back. So if there was anything else that was changed internally, now I've not done a detailed strip, so I haven't pulled out every single part and gone over it with a microscope, but I can see pretty well through the openings in the back of the frame and down inside, and I can't see anything else that's been changed. So here's the up close look at the Raider. And again, the only thing that I can see that is different is the trigger. And I'll roll in those close up photos of the trigger from before and after. And you'll see in the before photos, there is a lot of wear, particularly toward the rear of the trigger. On the left side, the wear was greater. On the right side, it was more of just a line at the top and a little bit of a scuff at the bottom, but they were definitely present. Whereas on the pistol now, there is no wear on the trigger whatsoever. And I will flip it around also so you can see the other side. And here's a close up of the starboard side of the Raider. And I'll make that as big as I can. Again, you can see no wear on the trigger. And before on this side, there was a scuff both at the bottom and the top, which is not present now. All the other parts, and I'm not going to try to disassemble the pistol to show you this. You're just gonna have to take my word for it but they all exhibit the same amount of wear and firing residue and one thing and another that I saw on there before I shipped the pistol back. In any case, the pistol itself now seems to be back in tip-top condition and I can't wait to get it out to the range to test fire it. One other thing I wanted to mention is it's always nice when companies do something a little bit extra. As I said, I really dislike having to package my firearms up and ship them places and wait for them to be repaired and come back to me and all of that. But at least it's nice when the companies do something. Tizosh threw in an extra brand new magazine with the pistol when it came back. And they also gave me a couple of Velcro patches that I can stick on different things. So that's kind of nice. At least that's something to say, hey, sorry about this. Here's something to try to make you feel a little bit better. So now it's time to head out to the range and see how the Raider is going to perform after coming back from the recall repair. 
and I'm out here on the range with the newly recall repaired Tzosh Raider, and I'm going to do just a little bit of test firing with it. I'm not going to shoot it extensively because I've done a lot of shooting with it already. I really just want to see how it's going to perform after going back for repair and then coming back to me. By the way, something I want to mention is as I'm recording this, this is April the 8th of 2024, which is Eclipse Day here in Ohio. And I think the eclipse is supposed to happen within the next hour or so. So if you see some odd lighting, that's probably why. I guess if it gets too dark, I'll have to stop the video and wait till the moon finally moves out from front of the sun and then start it back up again. And maybe in the interim, I'll get some low light shooting practice in. So we'll see how that goes. The first shooting I'm going to do since I have a new lighter trigger on this pistol, is from seven yards, and this is just going to be an accuracy drill, and I want to see what kind of accuracy I can get from it now as opposed to what I was getting with it before with that trigger that was about a pound heavier. So I'm going to load up. I've got some House of Pain munitions, 230 grain ball ammunition that I'm going to be using for this test, and let's see how it goes. And I'll take that from seven yards, one big hole. I was using a six o'clock hold and that's right where all those shots went. This one shot that made it outside the hole, I actually saw the sight drift right there. So this was my fault. Everything else is looking really good there. So this trigger is noticeably lighter and it's actually surprising me when it goes off. And I remember working with it before I had to press just hard enough that I felt like I might be pulling the shots a little bit but now it's keeping them nice and tight. So I really do like this lighter trigger that's on the Raider now. Next up, I'll try some controlled pairs from a distance of five yards and we'll see how they go. Not bad. And next, let's try a couple of seven yard failure drills. All right, body shots are looking good in those failure drills from seven yards. I managed to pull my first shot off to the left. It's actually inside that triangle, which is the no reflex zone but not a real good shot. This one, I think, would have canceled his ticket with that big 45 caliber bullet going right basically between his eyes. Next, I'll try three shots from 15 yards, then I'll move back and try three more shots from 25 yards, and I think I might be starting to lose my light here. <laughs> And of course, in my haste to try to get these shots in before it gets dark, I managed to forget to turn my target camera on that time. But there's my three shots from 15 yards. They're in about an inch and a half center to center or something like that. All of them are inside that center square. Now I'll back off to 25 yards and we'll see how it goes from there. All right, two of my shots from 25 yards inside this center square. One of them went just a little bit high. I'm sure this is my fault. 
All in all, I'm very happy with the way my Raider is performing after going back for its recall repair. By the way, I didn't mention this before, but all the shooting that I've done so far has been with this new magazine that they sent me with the pistol because I wanted to check the functioning on this and make sure it was going to function properly, and it is, no issues whatsoever. So the last thing left before I do lose the sun is to find out if my Tzosh Raider is still a seven yard tack driver. So here we go. And it's a little hard for me to see. I thought that blue tack would stand out a little bit better, but it does not. Well, let's see what happens. Yes! <laughs> On the first shot, my Tzosh recall repaired Raider is a seven yard tack driver. And this is one of those where I wanted to make sure that I had the target camera going because again, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the shrapnel. That was pretty much a dead center tack hit from that distance of seven yards. So outstanding performance from my Raider. Okay, folks, a couple of final thoughts with regard to returning my Tzosh Raider for the recall repair. First off, if you're like me and you've been hesitant to send your handgun back because you don't like having to deal with the hassle or you're concerned about what might happen to it while it's there or what condition it might be in when it comes back, I will say if my experience is any indication, the process is made as painless as it can be by Tzosh USA slash SDS Imports. Yes, it's still a hassle. Yes, it's still annoying, but it doesn't cost you anything. Your handgun gets there quickly. They turn it around quickly and get it back to you. If you're concerned about what your trigger might be like when you get it back, again, my trigger is outstanding. It is better than it was when I sent it in, so I'm extremely happy about that. And all the other attributes of the pistol, the accuracy, its reliability, and all that is still top notch. Again, I was using that brand new magazine the whole way through this test as I was shooting. And sometimes brand new magazines can be a little bit finicky until the spring starts to get a few cycles on it and maybe takes a little bit of a set, but no problem whatsoever. It ran that 230 grain House of Pain munitions ammunition with no trouble whatsoever. In any case, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. And I want to say thanks to House of Pain for receiving my Tzosh Raider and also for providing that ammunition that I used during today's test. If you go to House of Pain, either House of Pain Armament or House of Pain Munitions, you can use my discount code there, which is HR Funk, and save yourself some money off your purchase from House of Pain. And don't forget the Target sponsor, folks. Go to Targets online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. Until next time, good shooting. Bye-bye.